Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Forrest, looking at the collapse of the culture as well as the church. Many people are left scratching their heads, especially those of us who grew up in a very different America. But just as it's intellectually off base to blame the crisis in the church directly on Pope Francis, it's just as off base to blame the collapse of the nation on just one or a couple influencers. The collapse of the faith stretches back decades and many more decades than most people stop to consider. For example, Richard Cloward and Francis Fox Piven were two radical professors of sociology at Columbia University back in the 1960s. The aim of the husband-wife duo was to manufacture a crisis, a cultural crisis, by overwhelming the welfare system with a flood of new applicants. They correctly reasoned that this would force government to then adopt various policies which were radical leftist at their core disguised as wanting to help the poor, which of course the church jumped right onto. Always beware of those who want to help the poor, especially when they live in luxury. What we're witnessing in America today is their plan coming to fruition. Actually, more than coming to fruition, it's nearing its completion. The heart of the Cloward Piven plan is this. Violent revolution for the sake of socialism is not needed when instead you can simply so burden, overburden the welfare system that it collapses under its own weight. The resulting crisis then creates the opportunity for government to institute socialist policies like universal health care, also known as Obama, the takeover of various key segments of the economy, which we see in the push for climate change initiatives, also done in the name of the poor, who socialist leaders always claim are disproportionately injured by climate injustice, notice the word injustice, and other socialist doctrines like guaranteed income, which is being discussed more and more frequently. It's all unfolding right before our eyes, and of course the Marxist couple didn't just drop out of the sky in the 1960s. All of this was being formulated during World War II and the 1950s, back in the Leave it to Beaver days. Like we said, much further back than almost anyone realizes or stops to think about. Every one of these leftist programs is a parasite on the body of a nation. Yes, they start off small, but in the end, they will overwhelm and destroy the host, no matter how strong that host was in the beginning. That was the entire point of the plan from the beginning, overwhelm and destroy. It's everywhere you look. Marxists declaring some group is deprived of this or that and deserves to be given it to them for free in the name of justice. So defund the police, make billions in reparations, payments, expand welfare, don't enforce laws, let criminals go free. I mean, that's an extensive list there, look at that. And it's not even near the whole list. Every year, more and more money from working people goes to fund a rapidly expanding social justice apparatus and the cost of everything begins to go up. What never goes up, however, is the strength of your paycheck because more and more you are paying for these programs while at the same time the consequences of these programs weakens the buying power you have. There's only so much weight a civilization can carry before it's crushed beneath it. Streets, neighborhoods, and schools become less and less safe as the host begins to die. There's just not enough resources to take care of all the growing problems. It essentially turns into a battle for who can be the bigger victim and thus deserves the largest handout from those deemed to be the oppressors. Communism always based itself on creating a class war and then exploiting it. That was difficult to do in America because there was such a thriving middle class here. Workers were nowhere near as subjected to those who owned the means of production as they were in other nations, and they were able to live much more comfortable lives than many other people around the world. Consequently, the cries for revolution fell on deaf ears in America. So instead of bringing communism to the nation from the ground up, it would have to be delivered, imposed from the top down. While it would require much longer than Russia, for example, it has proven to be very effective. The Soviet Union is gone. Its stuff is thriving here. The strategy was simple. Create victims and make them a new class, and then appeal to an innate sense of justice. Exploit it and move in for the kill. It needs to be sadly noted that one of the largest players in this entire enterprise was America's Catholic leaders. The bishops have bellyached about social justice for decades and decades and decades. 
Of course, without mentioning much that they themselves are the recipients of huge amounts of this largesse, hundreds of millions of dollars a year. In fact, given the gigantic sums they receive from DC, it's very safe to conclude that without government money, the U.S. Bishops' Conference would have gone bankrupt and blessedly out of existence long ago. Half the operating budget of the USCCB, United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, traces directly back to liberals in D.C. handing them over enormous sums to buy their allegiance. In their work, Cloward and Pivens likely had not planned on enlisting the official help of Catholic structures to help tear down a Christian nation, but they struck gold when that help came anyway. Bishops have marched in lockstep with nearly every radical socialist policy introduced by the Democrat communists, wrapping it in the cloak of religiosity and appealing to a twisted sense of love thy neighbor, all while banking some nice coin. Here at Church Militant, we never stop talking about the intersection of faith and politics and how deadly it proves to be to people's lives and souls. As the old saying goes, the more you know. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.